Welcome to the course on VLSI physical design with timing analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about the clock tree synthesis. So, the content of this lecture includes introduction to the clock tree synthesis, then we will discuss about what are the design consideration we should follow for clocking system, then we will discuss about how we can effectively calculate the delay of a clock tree. So, this is the physical design flow where we are uh, now uh, focusing on clock tree synthesis. It comes after the placement of the blocks and uh, so clock tree synthesis is one of the very important step of VLSI physical design. So, uh, basically in most of the digital systems and digital designs are synchronous. So, it is synchronous with respect to the clock. This clock signal okay, is used to maintain synchronization of all computation uh, that takes place inside a chip. Okay. So, it is a very important signal. It should be routed inside the chip with utmost care. The clock signal is generated outside the chip. Okay. So, let us say if you, if you have a chip where the uh, basically uh, PLL is not inside the chip, then the clock signal is generated outside the chip. So, this generated signal should come in inside the clock pin, okay. it should uh, pass to the chip through the clock pin and it was routed throughout all the blocks inside the chip, all the flip flops inside the chip, all the latches inside the chip. So, basically if you can look into this synchronous system, this chip performance is directly proportional to the clock frequency. This clock net clock nets or the clock, the interconnects carrying the clock signal is the clock nets that needs to be routed with great precision. So, what uh, it basically determines the maximum frequency of the clock signal on which we can operate the chip. Okay. So, the maximum frequency will determine by this clock signal. So, basically we have uh, clock routers. Okay. So, the route clock routers is the router or the algorithm which is used to route the uh, clock signals. It needs to take several factors into account. For example, the first one is the resistance and capacitance of the metal layers. Then the second one is basically noise and crosstalk in the wires. And the third one is basically how, what is the type of load it is driving, okay. how many uh, flip flops it is driving. Based on that, the router will insert buffer whenever it is necessary. So, if you can see this clock signal is a global uh, net, okay. it is a global net and uh, this clock line is usually very long, it is very long. Let us say if you have a big chip, if you have a chip the, uh, and you have a clock pin here it has to route to all the flip flops inside the chip. So, let us say I have a flip flop here, I have flip flop here, I have flip flop here, I have flip flop here, then it can have uh, branches and the clock will route to them. Okay. So, the clock net is very long in, in nature because it is going to all the flip flops in, inside the chip. So, the delay caused by this long wear is due to the, the capacitance and resistance of that interconnect, due to the capacitance and uh, resistance of that interconnect. So, there are two types of integration level, one is called the low level integration and one is called the high level integration. When we are doing the low level integration, the gate capacitance is the dominant factor, okay, is the dominant factor compared to our interconnect capacitance because in low level integration the area is small and interconnect distance will be small and the interconnect capacitance will be small. So, this interconnect capacitance are ignored in case of low level integration. In case of high level integration this uh, gate capacitance is smaller compared to the interconnect capacitance as the area of the uh, chip is increases the interconnect distance passing through the different location of the chip also increases. Then the interconnect capacitance must be taken into account uh, when the clock 
wires are routed. So, basically we need to consider the combined effect of uh, resistance and capacitance of the interconnect. Okay. So, this uh, uh, basically lead to the RC delay. So, um, basically your RC delay increases which increases with the uh, as the uh, square of the scaling factor. The scaling factor is uh, let us say the if you go from one technology uh, to the other you, you have certain scaling factor is there your interconnect distance or delay will be increased by square of that. So, in a given technology node RC delay cannot be reduced by making the wire wider. If I increase the uh, wire wider your R will reduce resistance will uh, reduce. However, your C will increase. So, it is not a effective way to make the wires or the interconnect wider. So, one effective way to reduce the delay is use of the buffer. Okay. We have to use the specialized buffer in the clock tree. Okay. So, it helps to preserve the clock waveform because uh, if you pass the signal for a longer distance without buffering, thus uh, in transition time or the sleeve of the clock signal will be degraded. So, nothing comes freely. So, the disadvantage of using the buffer is that buffer has some inertial delay. Okay. By default, there is some delay of the buffer. It also consume uh, one thing is the area and second thing the power. So, it uh, leads to clock increase in the clock power. So, increase in clock power. Okay. So, this leads to increase in clock power. So, need to be considered in the overall uh, layout of high performance design. So, this uh, uh, basically the power consumption and the area needs to be considered when you are designing a high performance chip. So, this clock tree or the buffers can be used in two different uh, way. Okay. So, this uh, buffers can be used in two different way. Uh, so, if you can see here you have a big centralized buffer, we have a big centralized buffer and you have a small branching out of it, okay. small branching out of it and the, your flip flop will sit in each of the branches like this to get the clock signal. So, now this is uh, called a big centralized buffer approach. Then another is called distributed buffer approach. We have branches, different types of branches. Let us say this is the main branch, then this sub branch, then these are the sub sub branches, okay. And the flip flop will sit at these points, okay. So, this is called distributed buffer approach, distributed buffer approach. Uh, here, basically, advantage is that uh, the size of the buffer should not be big. In this case, we will discuss how we can compute the delay of the uh, interconnect delay of the clock tree. So, exact computation of uh, RC delay of the clock tree is very difficult, okay. it is very difficult. So, there are some kind of approximations are used to find the delay uh, through the clock tree in a reasonable accuracy. So, we do some kind of linear approximation to get the result in less time. So, one of the most popular method of uh, finding the interconnect delay is called ELMO delay model, which is used to calculate the uh, calculate the delay of the RC tree. Okay. We will discuss about this uh, ELMO delay model. So, if you have a clock network with interconnects, then we can uh, uh, analyze that network in different manners using different models. RC models. One of the model is called distributed RC uh, line, okay, distributed RC line, which is more accurate, but it takes more time to simulate. Distributed RC line will take uh, more time for simulation, but it is more accurate. But uh, time is also one of the important factor when you are designing the chip. So, there are some kind of equivalent pi model is there and equivalent T models of the uh, network is created to do the analysis in less time. So, let us consider a RC network given here and we have a uh, basically step response is given here. Okay. This is a step response is given at uh, S point. Okay. Then the, I am interested to find the delay uh, from the source node to the I node, from the source node to the 
I note. So, there are uh, some property need to be satisfied in case of whenever I am we are applying the Elmo delay. So, what are the properties are basically the network should have a single input node that is the first point. So, all capacitance should be between the node and the ground. For example, I have a resistance, the capacitance would be between this node and the ground. This is one assumption, this is one assumption. So, this kind of capacitance are allowed, however, this is allowed. But if I have a capacitance like this between the two nodes and there is a resistance here, okay, like a Miller cap or something, then you cannot use Elmo delay model. So, this is not allowed, this is not allowed and all the network does not contain in any resistive loop, okay, it does not contain any resistive loop which makes it a tree. Okay. Total resistance calculation uh, formulas are there. For example, you have to find the total resistance from the source node to any node in the network. Basically, this is called the path resistance. There is a concept called path resistance from the source node to that node. Okay. For example, let us say I will I'll do an analysis here from the source node to my node 4. What is my resistance. Okay. If I can see here, I have R1 in the path, I have uh, R3 in the path, okay. I have R4 in the path. So, I have R44 is basically the sum of R1, R3 and R4. So, this is basically the path resistance from node S to the node 4. So, this R44 is the path resistance from node S to node 4. So, in this one we are discussing about the shared path resistance. Okay. The shared path resistance I, R i k is the resistance shared among the path from the root node. Root node is S here from root node to i, okay. root node to i and uh, from root node to k. This is called as uh, what is the common uh, resistances among them. Okay. So, if you can see here R i k is basically R j which belongs to uh, intersection of the path between S to i and path uh, from S to k. So, if I take an example, so the, the it will collect all the resistance which is intersection of both of them. Okay. So, if you can see R i 4, R i 4, i 2, 4, then, then you have uh, uh, basically the resistance from S to I is uh, R1, R3 and Ri. Okay. So, Ri4 will be R1 plus R3 plus Ri okay. intersection of R1 plus R3 plus R4. Okay. So, we need to consider which are the common among them. Which is the common among them is basically R1 plus R3. So, this R I4 is basically R1 plus R3. Okay. R I4 is R1 plus R3. Then R I2 is basically R1. R I2 will be basically R1. So, what we are doing here is that we are calculating the uh, Elmo delay at node i is given by uh, this capacitance at that node multiplied by the shared path resistance, this shared path resistance. The, uh, first we have to calculate the shared path resistance at a node, then multiplied with the capacitance of that node. We have to do the summation over all the nodes k equal to 1 to n. So, here in this case what we are doing here is that Elmo delay of node i, node i is this one from the source node s is given in the RC tree is basically R1. Okay. You have R1 is the shared resistance at node 
1 multiplied by c1 multiplied by c1 similarly for the node 2 okay node 2 okay the shared uh, resistance is r1 r i 2 is basically r1 and the capacitance at node 2 is basically c2 okay similarly you can apply for all the nodes similarly you can do the calculation for all the nodes now this is the uh, elmo delay from the source node to the node i in the given rc tree now what we are doing is that we are doing the or uh, let's say if i have on buffer tree what is happening is the total capacitance of the sub tree can be defined as recursively so we have to calculate the each of the capacitance separately add with the the uh, present capacitance then to find the total capacitance ci is the node uh, i capacitance and ri is basically the resistance of the is i so the is of i is a set of uh, nodes adjacent to the node and does not contain in its parent node okay so all the adjacent nodes are denoted by is of i so we are interested there are two uh, approaches are there one is on buffer tree one is called buffer tree in case of on buffer tree all the capacitance are added because all the capacitance are in parallel okay let us say i have a capacitance here i have a capacitance here i have a uh, uh, capacitance here all are in parallel in parallel all the capacitance will add up so that is the concept is used here okay so all the capacitance will be added up in the on buffer tree because there is no buffer inserted in the interconnect so here this is of i is the this is of i is saying that set up node adjacent to the nodes and does not contain its in its parent node this is the parent node this is the parent node and these are the calculation for the adjacent node okay so we can do this calculation to add all the capacitances then uh, if you have a buffered tree if you have a buffered tree how we can do the uh, delay calculations so it is very interesting here because uh, you have several different equivalent circuit for the model and what we are doing is that we are adding a delay so you have a extra delay de uh, introduced due to the buffer and uh, that one if you can see here the buffer tree is uh, and its equivalent model let us say I have a clock source and I have a latch and uh, I have two wires now one is wire 1 and wire 2. So, in this case we are adding a buffer in between. So, if you are adding a buffer in between all the capacitance will, uh, and distance will not add up and they will be isolated by the buffer and this buffer has another important point it, it helps in. Uh, improving the slew let us say I, ha I have a uh, degraded uh, input slew given to the input of the buffer the output buffer uh, output output of the buffer will have a basically fast transition time so the slew at this at this point is bad but the slew at the output of the buffer is good so this is one of the requirement um, for the clock tree so it solves two purpose uh, introduction of the buffer helps in reducing the uh, delay through the uh, interconnect and uh, second uh, point is that in, it improves the improve the transition time of the clock signal so db is the denoted the internal delay of the buffer and rb is uh, denotes the output resistance and cb is basically the input capacitance so we have two uh, basically independent rc tree okay independent rc tree is there and the this independent rc tree will contribute to the delay and uh, the buffer of the uh, delay of the buffer will also added in the uh, while doing the interconnect delay so here what is happening is that if i have a node uh, i is a buffer node then this is the capacitance its capacitance small here if i have a buffer in the path otherwise the capacitance will be increasing by this amount so introducing a buffer will help in reducing the capacitance of the overall interconnect now we will discuss about the clock skew is basically a maximum uh, difference in the arrival time of the signal between two sinks okay so it uh, if you have two uh, flip flop 
here the arrival time difference of the clock signal will introduce skew ok. So, let us say this uh, uh, here uh, is T 1 and here it is T 2 the difference of T 2 minus T 1 is just Q. So, in this case uh, it was defined by basically uh, T S 0 to S i ok. So, let us say I have a source node S 0 ok and this is let us say i and uh, uh, this is S j this is the j node. So, this time T S 0 comma S i is the delay from here to here and uh, then the delay from here to here is basically T S 0 S j ok. So, you take the difference take the mod of that one that will give you my uh, clock skew. Since here I am giving a one instance if you have multiple instance point you have to take the max of that it will give you the maximum bound on the clock skew. What is the maximum skew that we need to take into account while doing the timing analysis. So, this is the clock skew of a clock tree. So, the T u comma p denotes the signal delay between the nodes u and p ok. So, if you can see here I have two cases case 1 here ok this is case 1 and this is case 2 ok. In case 1 the skew is basically if you can see here uh, maximum delay is uh, 20 here and the minimum delay is 9 here. So, as I told you the this the max value. So, the difference uh, basically the skew here is 20 minus 9 is 11. But if you can see in the second example, it is a balanced tree in all the nodes, all the points, the arrival time is same, arrival time is 20, then the clock skew is 0 here, clock skew is 0 here. So, this is a better design. Case 2 is a better design, ok, better design. So, uh, what is the main objective of uh, clock routing? First objective is to reduce the clock skew, reduce the clock skew, improve the circuit performance. We discussed that in our uh, uh, timing analysis lecture. Then uh, uh, second objective is to reduce the delay through the interconnect, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, basically guarantees faster clock and high frequency operation of the overall chip. So, we discussed about uh, clock tree. Uh, synthesis some of the terminologies and uh, some of the objective of the clock tree synthesis. Thank you for your attention.